Let's talk about the characteristic polynomial. So far, in every example we've done involving eigenvalues, we start the example by simply saying what the eigenvalues of the matrix we're interested in are. Um, and once we know what the eigenvalues are, we know how to find eigenvectors. For any eigenvalue, the eigenvectors are exactly the vectors that live in the eigenspace, which is defined as the null space of the difference between lambda times the identity minus the uh, matrix. So um, since we know how to find bases for null spaces, we know how to find eigenvectors once we are given the eigenvalues. Of course, the natural question to ask now is where do the eigenvalues come from? So if we start with a square matrix, how can we calculate the eigenvalues of that matrix? Well, um, the principal tool that we will use to find eigenvalues is called the characteristic polynomial of the matrix. So by definition, the characteristic polynomial of a matrix A is defined with notation with this Greek letter chi. So here we're looking at chi sub A of T. T represents a new variable here. And what we're looking at is the determinant of the variable T multiplied by the identity minus our matrix A. So to find the characteristic polynomial of a matrix, we need to set up first a difference matrix, T times the identity and then subtract A. And then we take a determinant of that new matrix. And what we end up calculating here is the characteristic polynomial. So here's an example. Um, here we're looking at a matrix A and this matrix is two by two and the columns are one, two, negative one, zero. To calculate the characteristic polynomial, we set up the matrix T times the two by two identity, which is the matrix that just has T's on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. And then we subtract off the matrix A. And once we're done with this subtraction, we'll take a determinant of the new matrix. So when we do the subtraction, we end up with another two by two matrix. And now the columns of this two by two matrix are T minus one, zero minus two, which is negative two, zero minus a negative one, which is one, and then T minus zero, which is equal to T. So now we're taking the determinant of this two by two matrix and determinants of two by twos are relatively simple to calculate. We're going to multiply the diagonal entries together and then subtract off the product of the other two entries. So here we're looking at the first term, T minus one quantity multiplied by T and then minus negative two times one, which is plus two. If we distribute this t factor in t minus one multiplied by t, we end up with t squared minus t. And so this calculation is telling us that the characteristic polynomial of this original two by two matrix that we started with is t squared minus t plus two. One interesting thing to note here is that our matrix here is two by two. And when we found the characteristic polynomial, we ended up with a quadratic or a degree two polynomial. Now it turns out um, that last example isn't a coincidence. The, our first important property or our first two important properties of characteristic polynomials say the following. Let's say that the matrix we're studying is an N by N matrix. It turns out that the characteristic polynomial of our matrix is always a monic polynomial. Remember what this means is that the coefficient of the term with the highest power of T is equal to one. And it also turns out that the degree of the characteristic polynomial is always equal to N, which is the size of the matrix. So the characteristic polynomial of a matrix is always monic, meaning its leading, co uh, leading coefficient is equal to one and its degree is always the size of the matrix. So um, the question to ask now is, well, why is the characteristic polynomial useful? Well, um, let's remember when we're studying polynomials, one of the things we're interested in is finding the roots of our polynomials. So let's say that we have a root R of our uh, characteristic polynomial. Well, what that means is that the determinant of R times the identity minus A is really 
the, uh, the characteristic polynomial of our matrix evaluated at t equals r, and if r is a root, that quantity must equal zero. So that's telling us that r times the identity minus a is a square matrix with zero determinant, which ultimately means that this matrix is singular. And if we're looking at the difference r times the identity minus a, and we know that matrix is singular, what that effectively means is that a minus r times the identity is singular because scaling this difference by negative one doesn't change the rank. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that the eigenvalues of our matrix are exactly the roots of the characteristic polynomial because by definition, a number is an eigenvalue if the difference of that number times the identity minus the matrix is a singular matrix. So this is our major theorem about the characteristic polynomial. The eigenvalues of any matrix are exactly the roots of the characteristic polynomial of that matrix. So this now gives us an inspiration for an idea uh, for how we're going to find eigenvalues. We can find the eigenvalues of a matrix by finding the roots of its characteristic polynomial. So the better we are at finding roots of polynomials, the better we are at calculating eigenvalues of matrices. Now, um, I want to issue a word of warning here, because um, even though the notation we are presenting is considered the canonical notation by mathematicians, you will find some authors using um, alternative notation. So some authors, in particular the author of our book, uses the notation determinant of the matrix minus t times the identity. And what I'd like to point out is while this is not the same exact thing as our definition, it is a scalar multiple of our definition. So um, if you're studying the determinant of the matrix minus t times the identity, what you end up calculating is negative one to the n multiplied by the determinant that we are studying. So be careful when you're uh, uh, reading Strang because Strang uses this quantity on the left, which is not identically equal to our definition of the characteristic polynomial, but it is negative one to the n multiplied by our definition of the characteristic polynomial. Um, so, and this is not essentially a, a, a big problem because um, it, the determinant of a minus t times the identity turns out to have the same roots as our characteristic polynomial. But if we sw switch the order between a and t times the identity here, we end up with a polynomial that is not a monic polynomial. So we need to be careful. Okay, so um, let's look at a calculation. So here we have a two by two matrix A and every entry in this matrix is equal to one. Well, let's calculate the characteristic polynomial of this matrix. To do so, we take T times the identity, which is the matrix with T's on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. And then we subtract off the matrix A that we're interested in. So this leaves us with the two by two, whose entries are T minus one in the upper left-hand corner, zero minus one in the bottom left-hand corner, zero minus one in the top right-hand corner, and T minus one in the bottom right-hand corner. To take uh, the determinant of this matrix, we use our two by two determinant formula. We'll take t minus one and multiply by t minus one, and then we'll subtract negative one times negative one. This gives us t minus one quantity squared minus one. And if we expand here, um, we end up with the, uh, the uh, polynomial t minus two multiplied by t. So um, it turns out that when we expand our, our characteristic polynomial here, we end up with a convenient way for factoring. We get t minus two multiplied by t. And one thing to note here is that the roots of this polynomial are two and zero. So this factorization tells us what the eigenvalues of our original matrix are. Here, the eigenvalues must be zero and two because zero and two are the roots of this polynomial. Um, let's look at a different calculation. 
Here we're looking at another two by two matrix and the columns are one, one, negative one, two. To calculate the characteristic polynomial, we take T minus the matrix and take a determinant. So now we're taking the determinant of the two by two whose diagonal entries are T minus one and T minus two and whose off diagonal entries are negative one and one. When we um, expand the determinant in this case, we end up with the polynomial t squared minus three times t plus three. Now, when I'm working with quadratic polynomials, the first thing I try to do when I'm, find, when I'm looking for the roots is I try to see for myself whether or not I can look at it and figure out the factors. But um, very often it's the case that I can't see it offhand in which case I fall back on the quadratic formula. So remember, we're looking for the roots of this polynomial because we want to know the eigenvalues of our matrix. Well, to find the roots here, we can, we can apply the quadratic formula. And when I applied the quadratic formula, I found two roots and um, the roots ended up being complex numbers that were not real. I found uh, one eigenvalue to be three minus root three times I over two. And I found my other root to be three plus root three times i over two. One thing to note here is that our original matrix was a real matrix, meaning every entry was a real number. And we did get uh, complex eigenvalues that are not real, but these two eigenvalues are related by conjugation, which we said last time is a property of roots of real polynomials. Um, and again, where did these calculations come from? Well, these two calculations came from applying the quadratic formula to the coefficients of our characteristic polynomial. Um, let's look at a bigger example. So here what we're looking at is the three by three determinant that arises from calculating the characteristic polynomial of a particular three by three matrix. So I started with a three by three matrix and wrote down what the definition of the characteristic polynomial is. And now I want to walk you through how I like to think about uh, three by three calculations to find the characteristic polynomial of a three by three matrix. So I'm looking at the, um, the calculation I would do when I set this polynomial or when I set this determinant up. And remember, the problem with determinants is that they're difficult to do by hand. So since this determinant is difficult to do by hand, what I'm going to try to do is introduce some row reductions to simplify the determinant. So the first step here, um, in the first step here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out two entries inside of this determinant. So I'm introducing a zero in the two one position and in the one two position. Well, where did those zeros come from? The idea is that we started with a negative four in the two one position and I eliminated this negative four by taking um, row two and subtracting two times row three. So I took row two in my original uh, row here and I subtracted two times row three from it in order to eliminate the negative four in the two one position. And then I follow the arithmetic through to the other positions. T minus 11 plus 12 is T plus one and 12 uh, minus two times the quantity t plus seven turns out to be negative two t minus two. Uh, the other row reduction I did was I cleared out this 12 in the one two position. And I did this by taking row one and adding two times row three to take advantage of this negative six in the three two position. Well, how does the arithmetic work here? Remember I'm applying this row reduction to the entire first row. So I'm taking t plus five and I'm adding negative four, which, uh, which uh, becomes t plus one. By design, 12 plus two times negative six is zero. And then we're taking negative 12 and we're adding two times the quantity t plus seven, which gives us two t plus two. So we've simplified this determinant calculation by taking advantage of two row reductions that produce zeros inside of the matrix. Now, one thing to notice is that um, here in our matrix, we have some factors in common in the first two rows. Um, if we pay attention to the first row here, what we see is that T plus one is in the first entry 
there's a zero in the second entry, and the third entry is two multiplied by t plus one. So t plus one divides the first row here, and t plus one also divides the second row here. So what we can do, because uh, uh, determinants end up cooperating with row scalings, is we can factor out each one of those factors of t plus one out of the first two rows. So when I factor out t plus one from the first row, I'm left with one, zero, two. And when I factor out t plus one from the second row, I'm left with zero, one, negative two. When I factor out these two factors of t plus one from the entire determinant, I get t plus one squared outside of my determinant. So now I've managed to factor out some of the t's from my complicated determinant. And what I can do uh, uh, with this new result is I can continue clearing out entries inside of this uh, three by three determinant. So now I can uh, use this one in the uh, uh, one one position of the matrix to clear out this negative two in the three one position. And remember that does not change the determinant because that's row addition. And then I can take this one in the two, two position and use it to clear out the uh, uh, three, two position. So um, I, I use uh, uh, the one in the two, two position to clear out this negative six. And if I follow the arithmetic through, I find that I still have this factor of T plus one quantity squared, but now I'm multiplying by this determinant of an upper triangular matrix where all of the diagonal entries are one except for the last diagonal entry, which is t minus one. So now I know the determinant of this square matrix. It's one times one times t minus one, because determinants of triangular matrices are just the product of the diagonal entries. And what I'm left with is a nice factorization of the characteristic polynomial of my original matrix. Here I get t plus one quantity squared multiplied by t minus one. So what is this telling me? Well, since I've managed to factor my characteristic polynomial, I can now read off the roots of the, uh, the characteristic polynomial. They are negative one and one, which tells me that the eigenvalues of my original matrix were negative one and one. So by doing certain row reductions in this characteristic polynomial calculation, I simplified the determinant I'm trying to take so that um, I ended up with a nice factorization. This idea works in many examples, but it doesn't work in every example. So I wanted to show everyone uh, this tool because this is how I attempt to do my characteristic polynomials uh, when I'm working on problems by hand. Okay, so um, 